pick up here now because this has been our leading story this afternoon. ESCOM implementing stage one load shedding again. Alternative energy sources seem more important than ever. One of those is new solar power, a new solar power station. That is the Katu Solar Park. It's in the Kalahari Desert. It's officially starting its operations next year and is set to pump 100 megawatts of power into the electricity grid. Here to explain how it works and the difference it will make is energy analyst Chris Yellen. Chris, difficult times energy-wise, we've been here before. Is this going to be the solution or just a small part of it? Only a very small part of the solution. Um, in fact, if you look at the new integrated resource plan for electricity, there is no further uh, scope for what is known as concentrating solar power plants, which is what this Cathu plant is. Uh, it's a very interesting plant. Uh, it has a certain amount of energy storage which means it can dispatch electricity even after the sun is set for a, a period of four and a half hours, which makes it very useful for meeting the evening peak. But unfortunately, uh, concentrating solar plants are very expensive. What can we do with 100 megawatts in practical terms? Well, look, uh, 100 megawatts is the size of a reasonably sized small town. Uh, just to give you some sort of scale, uh, a city of Johannesburg is about 2,000 megawatts and this is about 200 megawatts, so about one-tenth the size of Johannesburg. Uh, it's useful because it can dispatch electricity during the day while the sun is shining, as well as if the sun goes behind a cloud or if there's bad weather, or in the evening, uh, uh, to cater for that evening peak, because in a domestic uh, environment, uh, electricity is used uh, mainly in the evening peak, uh, when people come home from work and make supper uh, and, and, and heat water, etc. Let's speak about the environmental benefits mm. because one cannot have a discussion about solar energy and not speak about how it will help with this Katu solar park. It will, I understand, cut carbon dioxide output by up to 6 million tons over a 20-year period. Yes. Well, this, of course, is very important. Uh, and uh, together with other renewable energy sources like solar PV and wind, uh, and even uh, non-renewable sources like gas, which have reduced uh, carbon emissions compared to coal uh, and, and diesel fuels. Uh, so uh, these alternative energy sources are part of the solution to uh, South Africa meeting its international commitments for carbon emission reductions as per the Paris Accord. Very quickly, how do we make solar energy more accessible to the majority of South Africans? In the end, it's going to be all about the economics and that's the really interesting thing, uh, is that the, uh, the, the, as time goes by, the cost of renewable energy is dropping significantly. But remember, renewable energy on its own is not the solution because it's intermittent. So it needs to be used in conjunction with other flexible sources of energy generation, for example, gas or energy storage, pumped water storage schemes. Uh, and even, of course, we have significant uh, baseload capacity of coal and some nuclear. Uh, so it's not a case of all renewables. Uh, there's going to become a time when uh, the traditional fuels of coal uh, get ramped down as the old coal power stations come to the end of their life. And during this period, I see that the new energy sources, clean energy sources, such as uh, wind and solar PV and concentrating solar, backed up with battery storage and gas, are going to be filling the gap as coal becomes decommissioned as we move forward. This is not a sudden process. It's not a process that is suddenly going to be leaving a lot of people without jobs. Uh, it's, not a, it's not an event. It's a process that's going to take decades. And we've got plenty of time to prepare for this energy transition, to train people, to skill them, uh, to build uh, renewable plants in the areas where the coal mines were being, are being de decommissioned. So I think that this fear that uh, a renewable energy is going to suddenly create a lot of uh, loss of jobs is completely unfounded. In fact, it's going to create a lot more jobs. The trouble is, of course, it's going to be perhaps in different geographic areas, and it's going to be different skill sets. But that's what the energy transition is all about. And as I say, we've got plenty of time to plan for this energy transition and to implement it. Chris Yelland, energy expert with EE Publishers, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you.